The Mass Effect Legendary Edition is only a few weeks away and one of the biggest decisions that you will make when starting the series is what class to play as this will affect your overall experience with the game. This video series is designed to give you an in-depth look into each class so that you can make the most informed choice to match your preferred playstyle. In today's video we're going to take a deep dive look at the Soldier class and everything it has to offer as well as looking at how the class evolved across the trilogy and some tips and advice on some of the best companions that pair nicely with this class. The Soldier class is a pure combat specialist. Soldiers have the most thorough weapons training and can use all special ammo types. No one is tougher or more effective when it comes to taking down enemies with gunfire. A versatile class, they can deal with a wide range of combat situations and are well suited for beginner players. It appears the developers at Bioware thought so too, as if you choose to play as the default Commander Shepard, this will be the class chosen for you. Players who choose the Soldier class do get some nice perks, including improved health and a small boost to health regeneration. They can also use the wider selection of weapons and are the only class that can wear the heavier ammo sets, which provide increased protection and survivability. They do have a glaring weakness though, which is a complete lack of biotic and tech abilities, leaving them completely reliant on squad mates to pick up the slack in these areas. In the original Mass Effect, only the Soldier class could use all the weapons available, though we do know that this is being tweaked in the Legendary Edition, with all weapons now available to every class. However, the Soldier will still have an advantage in that they are the only class that can specialise and train in these weapons, including pistols, shotguns, assault rifles and sniper rifles. In Mass Effect 1, as you level up and spend points into each of these weapon types, this Will unlock a special talent which is only available when that weapon is selected. For example, pistols gain access to the marksman's talent which improves fire rate and accuracy as well as reducing overheating. Shotguns gain the carnage ability which fires a concentrated fireball like blast dealing massive damage and staggering enemies. Assault rifles have overkill which allows the rifle to be fired for a longer period with increased accuracy and reducing overheating. And finally, sniper rifles get assassination, which provides a powerful damage boost to your next shot. On a side note, it's worth noting that in Mass Effect 1, all weapons have infinite ammo, with the game employing an overheating mechanic, while Mass Effect 2 and 3 opted for ammo clips instead, which are dropped by enemies or can be looted from ammo crates. Apart from weapon talents, the soldier also has several passive class talents which are useful. The combat armor tree increases your damage reduction and hardening, increasing your armor rating. You can also unlock shield boost which increases the recharge percentage for your shields per second. Fitness also increases your health and grants access to the immunity ability which when activated reduces the damage done to your health by a set percentage. This starts at 50% and then increases to 60% and 80% as you spec into it. The immunity skill is a definite lifesaver and incredibly useful when your shield drops. The assault training talent trait on the other hand is all about making you a more efficient killer, increasing both your melee and weapon damage and granting the adrenaline burst ability which allows you to reset the cooldown times for all talents. As you reach the higher levels of the soldier's skill tree, you can also choose between two possible specialisms. Commando, which increases all weapon damage, improving the immunity, marksman and assassination abilities. It's all all about lethal efficiency and precision making you a killing machine. In contrast, Shock Trooper focuses on increased health and damage protection, specializing in the immunity, barrier and adrenaline burst abilities. This specialism focuses on resilience and survivability, effectively making you a tank class. 
Given the soldier's complete lack of biotic and tech abilities in Mass Effect 1, choosing the right squad mace is crucial when dealing with any combat scenario the game throws at you. You want to pick characters that support your playstyle and help to weaken and disrupt enemies, allowing you to pick them off with gunfire. For me personally, I found Liara to be an incredibly useful and powerful companion with her arsenal of biotic powers. Her singularity is great for crowd control, her warp rips through barriers and armoured enemies, and her stasis move can be a lifesaver, allowing you to hold dangerous targets in place, the only downside being that you can't damage these targets, but it does allow you to take them out of the fight temporarily, giving you some much needed breathing space to take out the smaller, weaker enemies before turning your sights on them. In Mass Effect 1, the most useful companion in my opinion though is Tally and her tech abilities. Her overload is great against shielded enemies, which once their shield is stripped away, pairs nicely with Liara's singularity, lifting them into the air, allowing you to finish them off. AI hacking and sabotage are also incredibly useful abilities against synthetic enemies like the Geth. And finally, decryption is a must-have ability as this allows you to hack into higher level wall safes for some valuable weapons, armor, and mods. In Mass Effect 2, the combat is much more streamlined with an increased focus on simple skill trees and quickly selectable class powers. The franchise took a very definite move away from the more RPG-based skill progression of the first game to a more action-oriented cover system and fluid combat, which is very much geared around weapons, class powers and synergies. Soldiers continue to be the only class able to specialize in multiple weapons, including assault rifles, rifles, heavy pistols, shotguns, sniper rifles, and the new heavy weapons. In Mass Effect 2, there are six class powers available to the soldier. Combat Mastery is back, a passive class power providing increased health, weapon damage, storm speed, and a boost in Paragon and Renegade points to those who choose to spec into this tree. Just like in the first game, players can choose to specialize into commando or shock trooper roles, which act the same. Some of the new active powers in Mass Effect 2 though include Adrenaline Rush, my personal favorite, which when activated provides a limited duration damage bonus to weapons and a time slowing effect making it easier to line up shots. Then there's Concussive Shot, which when activated fires a concentrated high powered shot from your weapon, dealing massive damage to the target and a chance to stun for a few seconds. Both powers act on a cooldown that can be shortened as you spec into each ability. In addition to these powers, the Soldier class is also unique in that they are the only class able to use all special ammo types, a new feature introduced in Mass Effect 2. In Mass Effect 1, you could attach ammo types to weapons as mods, but these were not interchangeable easily in combat. In Mass Effect 2, the ammo types are now mapped to your class powers and quickly selectable from your power wheel, and it's a real game changer for the soldier class. Disruptor ammo causes additional damage to shields and increased damage to synthetic enemies, with a chance to temporarily disable them. In addition to this, the ammo also has a chance to overheat enemy weapons, thereby disabling them. Incendiary ammo causes fire damage to enemies, burning through armor and setting them on fire. This stops health regeneration, which is incredibly useful against Krogan and Vorcha, and has a chance to cause some enemies to panic. It's worth noting though that synthetic enemies are resistant to fire damage. Finally, you have Cryo Ammo, which when used has a chance to freeze enemies without any special defenses for a short time, preventing them from moving. Frozen enemies are more susceptible to damage and can even be shattered for an instant kill. 
The addition of these ammo types makes the soldier an even more versatile class, which means that players don't need to worry as much about choosing the right squad mates to pick up the slack, as the soldier can now do decent damage to shielded and armoured enemies. This gives you more freedom in Mass Effect 2, as you can choose companions based on the abilities that you like and the characters that you're interested in. Mass Effect 2 massively expands the roster, giving you 13 possible squad mates, though three of these are DLC content. This is still a huge increase over Mass Effect 1's five possible companions. Squad mate abilities in Mass Effect 2 though are more streamlined compared to ME1, where each squad mate had eight talents. Companions in Mass Effect 2 have only two base powers and one loyalty power that unlocks after completing their loyalty mission. One of these powers can also be mapped to a shortcut prompt, usually right or left on the D-pad, allowing you to activate the ability without the need to pause the action, making the combat much more fluid and action focused. For those interested though, some of my favourite squad mates for abilities and dialogue were Garrus with his overload and armour piercing ammo, Tally with her combat drone and AI hacking, great to distract enemies and disable synthetic. Jack in all her biotic badassery who tears through enemies with her shockwave and lift abilities which are great for crowd control and Morden and Legion whose responses to events are often hilarious and also pack some pretty useful powers. Mass Effect 3 takes the combat from Mass Effect 2 and uses the same powers and cover base system, but with some tweaks. Let's start by talking about what is the same. In terms of class powers, the soldier still has access to the passive combat mastery, but now has the added fitness skill tree, which focuses on melee damage, health, and shield bonuses. Returning active powers include adrenaline rush, concussive shot, and the three ammo types, but soldiers now gain access to the frag grenade which rips enemies apart with a shrapnel packed grenade. This ability has no power recharge time and can be used immediately provided you have the ammo. Your ammo capacity can also be increased by one if you spec into this. Each class power can be leveled up to rank 6, and the third game in the trilogy takes a turn towards more RPG based skill progression, as after rank 3, each subsequent rank has two possible branches, allowing players to customise their Commander Shepard to their preferred playstyle. While most of the soldiers' powers feel and play the same, there are some new systems introduced in Mass Effect 3 that change things up. The first is the introduction of a new cool omni tool based melee attack. This has both a quick and charged form, and for the soldier class looks incredibly cool as you gain access to a wicked looking omni blade. The second massive change is the introduction of a new weight capacity system, which affects players' power recharge times. The soldier is unique as they have the highest potential weight capacity of any class, with a weight capacity bonus of 20 gained at level 1 of combat mastery, increasing to a bonus of 50 at level 2, and a maximum bonus of 100 is achievable by choosing the weight capacity upgrade at level 6 of combat mastery. This means again that the soldier class is the only class able to use multiple weapons without it having a detrimental effect on their power cooldowns. The third major change to Mass Effect 3 was the introduction of power combos. These require two different powers to activate, a primer and a detonator. Primers determine which of the four types of power combos will be primed and once detonated cause a massive explosion and increased damage. The four types of power combos available are fire, cryo, tech and biotic. Biotic explosions do two times normal damage against barriers and armor. Enemies killed by cryo explosions shatter without leaving a corpse, and enemies caught in the blast radius but not killed or frozen can be chilled and have their movement speed slowed by 30%. Tech bursts create a blast of electricity that inflicts severe damage on the shields and health of nearby enemies and have a chance to stun them. 
Tech Burst also does 2 times normal damage against shields. And finally, Fire Explosions create a blast of flames that inflict damage against the armor and health of enemies. Fire Explosions also do 2 times normal damage against armor. I won't go into too much detail on the different combinations possible here, as they are numerous, but I will flash up a couple here on the screen for you to see. The Soldier class has several possible primers with their ammo types to set up combos and can also detonate many of these themselves with their concussive shot. However, it's a good idea to bring two squad mates with you that also give you plenty of useful options in terms of primers and detonators, and you have plenty to choose from as Mass Effect 3 gives you 7 regular and 11 temporary squad mates as part of the story. Each has 4 active and 1 passive power. My personal favourites again are Liara with her crowd control moves of singularity and stasis and her armour and barrier damage dealing warp and warp ammo. It's worth noting that singularity and warp ammo are good primers and warp is a quick detonator too. My second favourite companion is Tally with her defence and combat drones, energy drain and sabotage which are useful against synthetic and shielded enemies. Her energy drain and sabotage are also good primers. And finally, ED is my third favourite choice for her incinerate and overload abilities. Pairing her with someone who has cryoblast like Caden for example can also offer some powerful power combo options. So there you have it, there is everything that you need to know about the Soldier class before jumping into the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Let me know what you think of the Soldier and if you have any more questions about the class, please feel free to post these in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, remember to show your support by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing. I will be back again next week with my next video in the series which will focus on the Adept, so look forward to that. Have a great week guys and girls and as always, happy gaming. I should go.